again to the metal voice, George Lynch, all the way in Montana. How are you doing, sir? How are you? <laughs> Good news. Well, you stay all the way in Montana. I mean, if, if somebody's in Wyoming, that's not very far. No. <laughs> no. I mean, new album is a Babylon and just been released October the 20th. You had a, a new video single that was released, The Sinner, taken from that album. And uh, right off the bat, um, what can people expect from this album? Opposed to the last album that you released in terms of musical styles or whatever you did. Uh, well, first off, I have to remember what the last record was, uh, they were referring to, are you referring to a, the last the Lynch, last Mob? Lynch Mob, Mob album? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And that was, uh, I believe, I believe the last Lynch Mob record we did was the one that was sort of we, wicked sensation reimagined where we re-recorded. You. Yeah. We re-recorded wicked sensation in a new style, you know, we kind of rewrote the songs a bit. And uh, uh, I think that was the last record we did. And before that, I think was the possibly the Brotherhood. The Brotherhood, yeah, twenty seventeen, yeah. Which is the last original Lynch Mob record we did. That yeah. was with uh, Sean McNabb and uh, Jimmy, yeah. myself, and Oni. Yeah, it was the last record with Oni. And uh, we had uh, you know pretty lofty aspirations for that record. It was it was kind of interesting, you know. I had. Uh, uh, you know, we called it the Brotherhood for a reason because we, you know, we were hoping that this would be the last incarnation, the final incarnation of the band, and establish that as the band going forward forever, right? And of course, the band broke up before the record was even released. So, so much for the Brotherhood. <laughs> oh my God! So this record, uh, Babylon, I'm kind of you know, Lynch Mob has been a revolving door, obviously, for decades. So. On this record, what happened was we just, you know, we've got Gabriel in the band, some vocals. We've got uh, Jaron on bass, Jimmy's playing drums, myself. And uh, we said, you know, forget about Wicked Sensation. Forget about keeping everything together forever. Let's just put this together and just stop chasing the past and just be what we are. And that's what, and with, with no aspirations other than that. And, you know... It's kind of a new chapter for us. And then all the things that I'd hoped for with all the other versions of the band since 1980, or I'm sorry, 1990, mm -hmm. uh, sort of just happened. You know, I and mean, the band has stayed together for you now a couple, few years. Uh, we've got, we've grown tight. We've grown we're friends. We have a great time. We laugh. We, we work hard. And uh, it's a killer version of the band. It's just all of this fuck. So I'm like, you know what? I'm afraid of this falling apart. So what we're going to do is we're just going to, this is going to be it. This will be the final version of the band. Uh, we'll, have a, we'll have this record to document that. It's a great record, I feel. And uh, we'll go out and tour it for a year, and I'll be all fran wide and that'll be it. And we'll go out on our terms rather than somebody spiriting away our singer and our bass player and me having to start over and, Okay, here's the 27th version of Lynch Mob. Like that. So I'm done with that. So this will be the last version of Lynch Mob. We'll do our last tour, our last record, and it'll be the final chapter and the end of the story. And I'm um, go out uh, with a bang instead of a whimper. Is it going to be like like the Scorpions? They announced the you know the end of the their the, the retirement. We'll call it, but it'll be a never ending. It's like as soon as you know they kept going, right? They're still retiring, or they're still it's their last tour, but they keep going. Yeah. Is it going to be something like that, where you know if the opportunity presents yeah. itself, you're going to keep? Yeah, going? that's what we're going to do. That's our plan. See, we call it the final ride. But then there's the final final ride. Just kidding. And then there's the look. This is the biggest thing in in music today. Everybody says it's the final. It's the final, final, final tour, and then it never is, right? This time we really mean it. This time you mean it. Sorry about right. that last time when we <laughs> lied. Um, no, no, no. No, no, this will be it. Uh, and we put a date on it. It's March uh, March 23. Or no, no, March 25. So 24, it's generally, you know, 2024 is going to be a, a, uh, into the first three months of 25 and then uh the end the last show is definitely 
launches a rock cruise in 25 years. Did you sign any legal documents like Motley Crue did and said, look, it's 2025. It's that's the end. We've signed with a lawyer. Yeah, no. but you know, you, you don't want to go up against my lawyers, dude. I mean, I've got a really good uh, team of uh, attorneys. You might've heard of them. <clears throat> Do we cheat them and how? <laughs> They're the best. I hear they're the best. They're the best. They're the best. Everybody laughs. I mean, that's why they laugh because they're afraid. Yeah. These guys, it's, yeah. So you talk about the dream team. Oh my God. The dream team. That's right. That's right. If the glove don't fit Babylon, what, what is, is that title? It's sort of like the times that we're living in. Is that kind of where that title came from? Well, can I be, uh, completely honest with you um and and just, i don't like when people just between me and you that go because ahead. that implies that implies all the other answers have been dishonest but anyways uh in answer to your question uh, uh uh to be quite honest i just I, I, I saw the name somewhere i don't know whatever and uh and i thought it looked cool and it sounded cool and it sort of conjured up some cool imagery and I thought, that's cool. And now, uh, after the fact, you can apply all this kind of different meanings to it, you know, if you want. I do, you know, I mean, I do interviews, they go, well, what does it mean? I go, well, you know, it's the, uh, uh, it's the lexicon of a language of the human experience and all the content. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, or how about four different members? We all speak a different musical language and then we all converge together on this album to speak one voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can make up all kinds of shit. But it sounded cool. That's the main reason to call it that. It's probably a subconscious thing, too, like your environment, you know, the, what's going on in the world today. And it kind of just fit perfectly, I would think. Right. Or yeah. maybe it just sounded um, cool. You know, I think all the all the uh, great titles and, and, and album titles and so forth in rock history um, uh, are, uh, you know, people kind of apply their own perception and su- subjective meaning to it. So that's all. You know, I'm just creating a a word. You know, I mean, I'm just a, put a word on it, and and, and people can yeah. can mean whatever it means to them. I'm, I'm not dictating anything. I don't have any secret knowledge. Okay, <laughs> it's good to know. It's good to know. Yeah, um, yeah well, well, you know, you know, his uh, uh, art and especially rock and roll is, is is littered with with all this sort of you know uh, riddles. Yeah, well, with uh, you know. It, it, lyrics that hint at secret knowledge that rock stars hold, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 And I, I was and hoping there'd be something like that there, but yeah, yeah, yeah. You were hoping I would have the uh, the, 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 the answer to the meaning of the, our our meaningless existence. Yes. Yeah. No, sorry. Okay. <laughs> All if right. I, well, if I did, I'd be selling that instead of records. Yeah. 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 Um, when you go out on tour as Lynch Mob, is there a certain percentage of docking material that you always do, or is it just strictly Lynch Mob? Well, we do. We, well, it, over the past three years or so, we've been doing a lot of shows with docking, supporting docking. And um, uh, uh, in those cases, obviously, we can't play docking songs except for Mr. Scary. But um, uh, uh, other than that, yeah, we do a healthy dose of docking material. Uh, we change our set every night on the fly. I mean, we literally will just call songs out. So we don't have a set set list. Um, but this is usually, uh, you know, I say a good 30% of our set is docking. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and now on the, on the upcoming tour, um, we're going to change it up considerably uh, because we don't want anybody coming to the show and seeing the same show again. So, uh, you know, that we did last year or whatever. So, um, we're going to have an acoustic uh, kind of little micro set in the middle of the set and break things down, you know, with percussion and, you know, candelabras and all that kind of stuff. We've had some production, uh, a little bit of production. I mean, it's not Kiss, you know, yeah. something. And, um, you know, I'm trying to do added value and, and keep things uh, interesting for people and for ourselves. Has the door closed on you and Don playing uh, the same shows together? I mean, as separate entities like Lynch Mob and Dawkins, you know, is that is that something of the past, or are you going to be? Uh, it, it sounds like it, it's kind of run its course. Yeah, I think so. Um, so that's fine. You know, um, 
Yeah. So, you know, we did it for, it, it's, it, I mean, it was a, it was a thing I'd been pushing to do for, for many, many years. And I've been proposing the idea to different agents that I've had over the decades and I never found anyone to pick up the ball and run with it until I um, started working with my present agency, which also represents docking. Mm -hmm. And um, Don and I are on relatively good terms. We're fine. And so it worked. And, uh, you know, he agreed to it and we went out and, um, you know, I always thought that the the competitive kind of thing, the story, the bad story, the people, if they were aware of it, would uh, spur some interest and, you know, and it worked. And I think that's healthy. And, uh, you know, that's entertainment. <laughs> you know, it's interesting, like over the years, you, you, you know, I read uh, since I was a teenager, oh, George and Don can't get along. And then, you know, later on, well, it was really fabricated by the media. And then you read again, no, they can't get along. Like this back and forth of can they get along or did they get along? I mean, what's the real story behind all that? Did you get along? Well, uh, I think in, I, I'm not going to cast any aspersions or point any fingers, but I will say that just generally human beings have a tendency maybe to mimic the, the, the narrative, okay. if that makes sense. So, uh, you know, you repeat a lie long enough, it becomes, you know, stops Self being mythology and becomes true. So not the truth, but, you know. So you're saying self-fulfilling prophecy? Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So listen, I don't have any problem with, with, okay. with people. I, you know, generally I, I'm fine. And I'm also very forgiving if I do have problems with people. I'm, I, it's water under the bridge, you know, with life is too short and too precious. So um, and I love people and I, and I like making things work and I like fixing things and everybody getting along and doing things that matter that are of value. And um, so I think all this kind of infighting is actually ridiculously silly and I don't buy into it. But uh, you know, not everybody feels the same as I do, so right. I can't change yeah. that. I, I listened to the new Dawkins album and I go, is this George Lynch playing on it? And John Levin, he always sounds like you. I mean, is that a compliment or is it kind of, I guess it would be a compliment. Somebody's got to sound like me. <laughs> no. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, his tone, his guitar tone, his playing, it yeah. sounds like you're playing on it. Yeah. He's kind of mimicking, right? You in a sense, right? So it's, well, I don't I, know. Do, do you find it as a compliment or insulting or? I think that's the whole point of him. I mean, that's kind of what he's supposed to do. Uh, insulting? No. I mean, I think it's, I, I, I feel that uh, uh, it's kind of, uh, you know, absolutely a, a compliment to feel that you're worthy of being mimicked. You know, people apologize for asking you for your autograph or a picture on the street. I'm like, well, I'm you know, I'm, I'm very thankful that I that I uh, matter enough in some people's eyes to warrant being asked for my name written on a piece of paper. So, yeah, I'm not, I'm not assaulted by that. All right. All right. Uh, back to the new album, the overall sound for, let's say, someone who hasn't listened to it. What can they expect? Um, well, when I first heard it after it was all finished, you know, because when you get... When you're working on a record, you're real close to it. It's sometimes hard to really see it, you know, there's so inside of it. But after the dust settled and we got through all the, you know, the, the uh, mechanics of building, you know, finishing the record, I thought it sounded like Guns N' Roses. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and they sold a lot of records, so that's good. Yeah, so there you go. You're good. <laughs> Lynch mob tribute to Guns and Roses. <laughs> How's the apple? Good. Apples in Montana. <laughs> Is it an apple? <laughs> yeah, they don't feed me very well here. Okay. You're on tour, I, I assume, right? No. No, you're not? No. You live in Montana? No. No. <laughs> no. Uh, no. Uh, no. We have some family stuff going on. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, 
I don't know, favorite tracks on the off for me. I think it's, it, it sounds great. You know, I kind of like a race time after time. Uh, I'm ready. Is there any favorite tracks that you really, that stand out for you on this album? Um, well, no, I mean, you know, it isn't, it isn't, it doesn't have that song, that one song like Wicked Sensation did where you say, oh, obviously that's the name of the album. That's the first single. And that's the, going to be the number one song on the record. We, nothing sticks, jumps out at me like that. Um, in a, and, and quite honestly, I've done uh, probably released a couple of records since then and worked on even more records since then. So, uh, in fact, I just finished a, what was going to be a Dirty Shirley sec second album. Okay. And I wrote and recorded all 11 songs in six days. Wow. wow. <laughs> and so that was in my head. And before that, I worked on some other record. I can't remember what it was. So I just, you know, I've just like on this tear of just, I don't know what's going on with me, but anyways, uh, I've just been doing like so many records every year, which is crazy. I don't know why, but um, after I'm dead, they'll declare me a genius project. I'm going to book a world record for the most dumb albums done very quickly. Oh, let me ask you this. Do you find that sometimes when you overdo it, like you just mentioned, like so many albums, it kind of loses something because you're not as focused or you it's, it just comes out of you and the creativity just sometimes you open this sort of door right of creativity and just pours out of people yeah um i think all that's true i think maybe uh, I, I don't know i mean certainly focus helps you know and and, and helps to differentiate one record from another but so does having a different band and a different singer, a different mixer, a different producer, you know, all those things matter. Um, so, um, you know, I'm limited in my scope of what I can imagine and write, create, and compose. So, um, you know, it's not that if like I just did one record every two years, it would be better. I don't, I don't know that that's true. You know, I, I, I just, um, I don't know. Sometimes when you spend too much time on something, you ruin it as well. I've had that happen. Yeah. Yeah. Without yeah. rabbit hole and just never come back out and just chase this thing that you end up chasing, you know, uh, killing what was beautiful about it. So, you know, I do like writing fast and, 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 and being inspired and just capturing the lightning in a bottle for a second and, and moving on, you know. And of course, you make it as good as it can be. And, and, um, I've been doing this long enough where I think I know, you know, I sort of have a system for writing and, 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 and using my time economically and being productive. So, and I pride myself in that, you know, because I'm, I'm somewhat ashamed of the fact that I would spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in years making albums in the past that was a complete waste of time and money, I think, um, in the band and end up broke. <laughs> Are you I referring to Doc in the early years or Doc and Lynch, early Lynch, Bob, both. Yeah. yeah. How about Sweet, Michael Sweet? Any more? You, you had a project not too long ago with him, correct? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've done three records. Yeah. And, um, you know, um, you know, sometimes you have to look at work like work, you know, and I, and I pride myself in that. You know, I'm considering myself a working musician. Uh, not a rock star or anything like that. And uh, I pride myself in my work ethic and my productivity and, and and considered what I do a craft and try to get better at my craft. And uh, so when I take on a project, I look at it like that. And I, But I also understand there's an intangible mis mystery involved that I love. And that's what is so fascinating about my work is you don't have an intangible mystery in being a plumber. That's true. But, uh, you know, I have this, I get to deal with these magical forces as well as the practical side of, you know, just mechanics of making music. Um, there's also this kind of creative thing that's happening. That's just mysterious and beautiful. So um, every project for me is, has both, that's two sides of that coin that is so wonderful that it keeps it uh, fresh and fun. 
What about? It doesn't uh, matter what project it is. It really doesn't. I mean, they're all challenging, and they're all, uh, you know, and and that's what I do for a living too. And I, and I pride myself on that. I've been able to, you know, raise, you know, families uh, uh, over the half a century uh, consistently by being a musician. I mean, how rare is that? You know, I mean, I'm not a superstar, but I'm you know, uh, you know, consistently productive working musician that's raised wonderful families you know and, uh, and you serious. and you and you've inspired so many guitarists thousands upon thousands of guitarists with your guitar st style playing um right yeah i wasn't on the 200 rolling stones uh, list of top 250 guitar players there does anybody times. really care about the rolling stones <laughs> guitar player uh you know no uh, one it's, it's, it's according, according to Rolling Stone, I was if the list was the top 251 guitar players, I would have made. I would have ah, made that. yeah, yeah. But yeah, I just yeah. got, I just got left off just like right at the end. There. And actually, I think it'd be cooler to be number 250 rather than number one because you're still at one end of the list. You know what I mean? But kind Who's of number cooler. one, Jimi Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix was number one, probably. I would think. I guess probably or, or maybe the guys who actually came up with that weren't even, you know, don't even know who Jimi Hendrix is. Yeah, it was some, it's probably some PJ Harvey, I think was number one, some arty New York oh, punk okay. guitar player, you know, the Rolling Stones likes. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, your favorite and most underrated Dawkins album that you find just doesn't get that love that it should have gotten. Uh, they were underrated. I, I think, well, I'm sorry I don't have any, uh, well, because I think all the records were rated properly, you know, and I think we got a lot of appreciation for most of our records and the ones that were not as appreciated as well, like uh, Shadow Life, were, were for a good reason. Okay. So I don't think there's like some underdog record that we did that people weren't aware of or, you know, uh, right. appropriately appreciative of. <laughs> well, I mean, sometimes there's an artist who say, you know what? I really love making now, this album, but if you ask me that about Lynch Mob, if you ask me that about Lynch Mob, I would say well, that would, a question, uh, uh, Rebel. Okay. Was there and then there, there was a a, re, a a very good reason for that. Uh, the record company dropped the ball, self admittedly, big time with that record. They changed distributors. So they had some kind of deal with Sony, I think, and it got all screwed up and it screwed all, all the releases up during that period. They had no distribution, so they had no. Since they didn't have distribution, they didn't promote it. So basically, the record was completely ignored, and it was probably I would say it was our best record other than Wicked Sensation. And we were yeah. so pr proud of that record. We thought, oh, this everything came together on this album. We were firing on all cylinders. Oni wrote great. He was singing great. I love the songs. And the sound mix was fantastic. It was just a beautiful, beautiful record, beautiful experience. And it came out and, and, and just fell on deaf ears. Yeah, no, actually, it's a really good album. That was, what, 2015, I think? Uh yeah, and it just got, yeah, I just got re-released with new artwork on uh, on another label. Yeah. All right. Well, and then that's it. Do you have anything else you want to promote or you want to talk about? Uh, Mr. Scary at Macintosh Apples. <laughs> yeah. Happy, happy and George Lynch Apples. Right. Uh, comes with chlamydia. Yeah. <laughs> no extra charge for the chlamydia. Look at that. Come on, man. I sign every one. That's beautiful. Look My at molars. That. Look at that. We could just. That would be a good business. We, we, we could put that in some sort of a museum. Lynch Mob, new album, Babylon, you know, was released October yeah. 20th. Congratulations. And this yeah, is the man. farewell, the goodbye, the big goodbye. A big long goodbye. It's going to be a year, and, a year and three months, 15 months of waving goodbye. So this is the final tour, correct? This is, this. that's it. This is goodbye, no more. Yes. Okay. All right. You can, yeah, we're not liars like those other bands. <laughs> Tell the truth when we say that's it. So count on it. So when you come and see the show, uh, that'll be it, you know? Okay. Um, and, uh, there'll be no, 
uh, you know, final, final, we were just kidding, final ride. Sorry about that last week. But you're going to continue to make music. I mean, it's just Lynch Mob that's yes. sort of retiring, right? Yeah, it's Lynch Mob retiring. Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do. I mean, it's really hard for me to say 15 months from now what I'm going to be doing. And, uh, I imagine I'm, you know, of course, I'm still going to play guitar. I don't know if I'll still tour uh, aggressively. Probably not. And and I'll still record for sure. I'll still write, you know, um, I'm making plans to do a, a, a record, a, a write and record another instrumental record next year. So, you know, there's a cool. guitar, Guitars at the End of the World is out there right now. That's my second instrumental record. So I'm going to do a third next year. And I've got some other things in the fire, you know. That'll always be happening. All right. On that you know, I'll note, just slow, slow the pace down. All right. Well, thank you very much for being on the show. Yeah, man. 